Where does relationology come from? I received an invitation to speak at a business conference on the subject of networking. Now, I don't know how you feel when you hear that word networking. When I hear that word networking, something within me squirms and cringes, and I have real trouble not showing it on my face. <laughs> but I didn't want to turn up at the conference and speak as the anti-networking guy. So in my preparations, I remember thinking, actually, for us all, relationships are a science. Because me and you alike can all learn to do our relationships better. The gentleman next to me in the toilet broke all British protocol and he began a conversation with me. <laughs> he started by explaining that last night was a very big night out for him. Then he went on to explain to me that the programme didn't look very exciting, the speakers he'd never heard of and didn't sound very good. 30 minutes later, the keynote speaker was introduced. As I stood and walked to the platform and stood behind the podium, there was one man whose head fell in his hands. <laughs> At the end of the session, he was the first in the queue. And his words were these. I'm so sorry, I had no idea who you were. How we treat those people who we think can do nothing for us is the greatest test of our authenticity. I believe that relationships offer an incredible differentiator and competitive advantage because people choose to work with people they know, people they like and people they trust. This attentiveness to the others, this emotional intelligence, you might want to call it, this ability to be able to read and understand other people and regulate and adapt our behaviour to get the best out of them is the thing that distinguishes good leaders from great leaders. Thank you.